Good morning, everyone. You know what that gold lion that I may or may not have pointed to, MGM line you know, over there means? It stands for some good luck. All right, walking into day two, and we have over 100 big blinds. Late reg is still open, but it's gonna start in a few minutes, and I'm ready to roll. There's not been many videos of day twos on this channel, so hopefully we're gonna make this one a good one and make it count, hoping for a long day. I'm not sure when we're gonna make the money, but obviously sometime today. That's it. Plan is to execute. I've played a lot of tournaments so far. I've kind of relatively been prepared to this moment to not freaking punt my massive chip stack. A chip stack is worth a lot. 6x starting, technically that's six buy-ins of 2,500. There's gonna be a lot of money up top in first place. I'm looking forward to it. So that's all I got. Day two of the MGM $2,500 tournament. Very loud music everywhere. And that's all I got, that's it. Wish me luck, gonna run it up. The cards gonna get in the air pretty soon and let's play some poker. Starting off this day two with a big stack with over 350,000 chips, I pick up King Jack offsuit in the first level here in day two, and I'm in a small blind. There's nothing going to open to 5,500. Action folds to me here, and not really loving the early position raise, I still have to make the call the big blind fold. So with this hand, we're going to a flop of 10-5 deuce rainbow. I check it over to him with basically nothing, and he bets out small 5,000. Playing super deep stacked against this specific opponent, I can go either way with a fold or call. And in this spot, I'm here to battle. So I make the call and let's see a turn, which is a bink top pair. What a king to come out on the turn. I guess I'm committed now hitting top pair. I start with a check over to him on a card that should favor him a lot more. And he bets out 11,000. So yeah. I hit top pair, I'm not going to fold, and raising seems like an overplay, so we're going to see a river when I make the call, and it's a queen. Don't really love this, but I do block ace-jack being the nuts, and whatever. I have a decision to check or bet, and I think betting doesn't really accomplish a whole lot, so I do check. He fires out 33,000 now, and this is pretty annoying. Like I said, the only good thing about my specific hand right now is that I have top pair and I have a jack in my hand, which blocks ace jack. So less combinations of really strong hands and whatever. I'm kind of annoyed, but I put myself in this spot to begin with. So whatever. If I lose, I lose. I make the call and he shows me ace four of spades. Wow, a bluff? Lucky to win this one, even though I didn't love it. And just like that, I cross over to the 400,000 chip mark. Pretty comfortable spot so far. Next hand, I pick up aces. Let's go. We're in level 12, and there's an older gentleman under the gun. Raises to 8,500. Pretty freaking massive raise from early position, and it folds to me. This is a dream. I'm going to size up with a three bet, so let's pile money in here. I three bet to 35,000 on the larger side, and this player quickly makes the call with 200,000 in his stack. So playing plenty deep, let's win a big one. The flop comes jack, seven, three, rainbow. Super dry, and... I don't really expect him to have ace king here a lot, so I expect him to have some sort of pair and over pair. So trying to pump as much money in the middle as possible. I bet 35,000, expecting him to be in here and battling it out, but he plinks for a long time and sadly folds. Says he liked his cards, but didn't like him enough to make the call. So I win this one, and although I didn't get a whole lot of action, it's still chipping up with 35k plus in profit this hand. It's pretty big. It's a nice spot. Following from that hand, I pick up ace-10 offsuit in plus one, and action folds to me, so I put in a raise with a good hand to 7,000. There's a player with a short stack with about 50k in there. He makes the call. Everyone else folds, so we're going out of position to a flop of jack-10-8. Pretty connected board here. I have middle pair, top kicker. Out of position versus a short stack, I start off with a check, and this player checks back. So expecting my hand to be good here a lot of the time. The turn is a low card that doesn't change the board at all. It's time to bet for value, I think. There's a lot of draws out there. There's a lot of scary cards I don't want to see with just ace-10, so I size up to 16,000. And, uh, well, you know, uncomfortable spot. This player just jams for, like, 48,000 total. What the hell, bro? This just doesn't make any sense in my head right now. I just really think that any jack or two pair would just bet on this flop 100% of the time. So it seems like he's either slow playing just the flopped straight or just completely spazzing. Anyways, it's only about 30,000 left for me to call, and it's really hard to flop the nuts and then slow play it, right, as a short stack. So I guess I just don't believe him. I'm not sure what's going on, so I stick it in for a call. Let's hope that we have a good hand. He has ace-queen. Oh my god. 
let's just hold don't want to see a queen or nine and the river is a brick nice nice to chip up here i stack an opponent we're one step closer to making the money and i chip up everything is going my way so far early on in the day all right on our first break quick little 15 minute thing play for two hours two levels it's good really good table draw compared to uh, some other tables that i've seen in this room so i'm feeling really comfortable i chipped up to over 500,000. it's nice to be in this spot where i get to pick my spots be selective obviously something you guys aren't familiar with the vlog so obviously I, you haven't seen that many hands because i've been very selective and that's it feeling good over 500k in chips there's a long way to go today gonna play until like the final two or three tables i believe let's just get there let's just survive after the break, we get involved in the next hand with ace-queen offsuit under the gun. Blinds have increased, and I raise things up to 8,000 here first to act, and only get the cutoff player to make the call. So we're going to a flop of 9-4 deuce rainbow. Out of position, pretty dry flop, and I think I can mix a lot of checks and some bets here. And ultimately, end of the day, I ended up just flipping a coin basically and ended up throwing out a bet. I throw 15,000 into the middle. In hindsight, this might be a little too big given the flop, but I'm basically just repping over pairs and such. So he decides to make the call for 15,000. So thinking he might have a nine of some sort, we're going to a turn which comes a king. Well... <laughs> Now, this is simply just not a card that I'm giving up on. It's a card that's going to benefit me a whole lot more than him, unless he just specifically has king nine. So here I bet out 22,000. I'm setting up a river shove basically on this really good bluff card. And he doesn't look super comfortable or happy about it, but continues again with a call. All right, things are getting dicey. I'm sitting with ace queen high. I might have to commit my stack in there. The river comes a nine. Hmm. This really stinks. Like I said, I put him on a lot of 9x holdings that now has basically improved to the nuts if that was the case. The issue is that my hand is really bad and I bet on the turn to represent a king a lot of the time. I also think hands like 8s, 7s through 10s can get a little sticky and wouldn't want to face a river shove. So basically just trying to put on maximum pressure. We're getting closer and closer to making the money here and he's got about 60,000 in a stack. I decide to fire out exactly 60,000, basically putting his tournament life at risk here. And when I put out this bet, he immediately doesn't look happy and says out loud that he doesn't beat a whole lot. All right, man, if that's the case, you don't beat a whole lot of hands, then just fold. It's totally fine, bro. Just let your cards go. And then he says, nice hand and sticks in a call. Damn it, so close. I just toss my cards into the muck as ace high is no good. And he shows me pocket jacks. Nice hand, sir. He also watches the channel. And unfortunately, I basically double up this opponent. And I'm down to about 340,000, close to where I started the day, but still not feeling great. And after this hand, it is announced that 121 players will make the money in a whopping prize pool of $364,000 for first place. All right, blinds have increased once again on the comeback trail. I pick up king queen offsuit in the hijack, and there is a low jack player who limps. He's on my right and decides to limp for 5,000. Uh, seeing him do this a lot, my hand definitely wants to raise as it's pretty solid. So I raise it up to 17,000. Folds all the way back around to him and he does the limp raise. Limp raises to like 65 or 70,000. I don't know what it is because I'm annoyed. I fold. It's just annoying, you know, I'm trying to play as standard as possible. And when you see some limp three bets, it just seems really strong. So... Yeah, here we are, losing a few hands now, not feeling happy about what's been going on, and I might be getting a little annoyed. All right, let's not let the tilt settle in too much. I pick up jack 10 of spades in the hijack and raisings up to 10,000. We only get the big blind player to defend. This is the same player that I doubled up two hands ago, so let's battle it back for my chips. Seeing a flop of queen 9-4, two diamonds and a spade, this is pretty sick. I have an open and a straight draw, and here we are. He checks it over to me, and this is clearly a really good flop for me to bet on, so I bet 7,000, and immediately, this player check raises to 22,000. Oh boy, this should be fun. There's a lot of really good turn cards I want to see, obviously any king, any eight, or a spade. That would be nice to just spike one of those and get there. I make the call, hoping to get all of my chips back on this hand. We're going to a turn now, which comes the 10 of clubs, so I've arrived in this spot with a 
hair. Anyways, he's first to act and he decides to size way the hell up to 55,000. What in the world? It's massive. I'm in position and with a lot of equity here, I'm not sure what to do anymore. He leaves himself with about 150,000 behind. So if I decide to make the call, SPR is going to be under one, which sets up a really easy river shove for him. And I'm unsure if I even get paid if I hit one of my cards. It's really annoying and I'm a little frustrated, obviously, given the recent developments. And I just don't think this player is ever bluffing here. Population tendencies, and especially in this field, say that no one's really bluffing with a check raise and large turn bet. So ultimately, it's like if I make the call here, am I even priced in for it? And if I do make the call and hit, will I even get paid? It seems like the answer is leaning towards no, because now if I do hit a straight, then it's a four liner as any jack gets there and it's less disguised. So I'm feeling pretty indifferent whether I want to call or fold. And ultimately, it's been a rough go. I'm going to conserve my chips and I let it go. Chip down to about 280,000 now. Update, that was a very piss poor two hours, two levels of poker. Did not win. I won one hand. I won one hand the whole freaking two hours. I won the fucking blind. I would, I don't know what to do. I every pot I enter, I lose. Besides the one, oh, I can't. I can't lie and say I didn't win a single hand. I, I won one hand. Last time we talked, I had five hundred over five hundred k. Now I have two hundred and fifty, two hundred no, nope, two hundred and thirty thousand. Blinds are going up. I'm gonna have under forty bigs. There's a hundred players left to make the money. So like two hundred and twenty players left. It's sweat time. It's, it's certainly sweat time. Am I gonna play basically two full days and brick it? Just might. Am I gonna run super hot, sun run day one, and then just just lose every bot I enter in day two? Also just might happen, we'll see. But I guess on the flip side, I ran really well the first two levels, I ran really bad the next two levels. That means the following two levels should be good. Send some heat, I need help. 100 players left in the money, I'm gonna need to uh, probably win some all-ins or chip the hell up somehow. I've been chipping all the way down to about 230,000 with 100 players left to make the money. We're in level 15 now and I pick up ace 10 off suit in the small blind. There's an only gun raised to 13,000. Action folds around to me and this is a good hand. Maybe could three bet sometimes, but I decided to just make the call and the big blind calls as well. So just us three to a flop of Jack 10 3, just Brick City. Awesome to see as I'm bricking everything so far and not feeling happy. Action checks all the way around. Going to a turn now, which comes a four of hearts, okay. Nothing again, but action checks through. And the river, 10. Oh, sick. There's actually some merit to be betting here for value with now second pair on the river, but action decides to check all the way around. I show my hand and I want to show you guys because I win a freaking pot. I finally get chips pushed my way after losing basically every hand for two hours. Wow. This feels nice. I get to chip up a little bit and it's a miracle. After winning a pot, let's keep the momentum alive. I pick up eight, nine of diamonds and plus one and raise things up to 12,000. Folds around to the button who makes the call and the big blind makes the call as well. So we're going multi-way to a flop, which comes queen, 10, three, two diamonds. Flopping a combo draw, massive flop for me. Let's freaking go here. The big blind checks and out of position three ways here, leaning more towards a check. Maybe could check raise if the button bites. So I check it over to the button and he does take the bait and bets out 10,000. This might get fun here. So the big blind decides to fold and I'm playing out of position against the button player. I have a decision to either be aggressive or passive in the situation. And you know, you watch my videos, you know which way I always try to lean towards. And I think this is the player type that I also can be aggressive with. So let's go for it. Combo draw with nine high, I check raise to 40,000. I think basically if I get a call or fold, both options seem fine to me. If he folds, I take down a decent sized pot with nine high, which is always fun. If he calls, then I have a ton of equity and he does end up making the call so let's just hidden out in this pot that's brewing to be pretty massive so far the turn is the deuce of spades brings in a backdoor flush draw and this actually seems to be a pretty tricky spot sitting with nine high i had every single intention of just pushing on this turn and just jamming here with all of my equity but i think about it more and i think that there's a chance that it can be dominated a lot by stronger flush draws here End of the day, I look at his stack, he has about 80,000 here. So it's only an all in or nothing. And the only issue is that we're on the turn with only one card to come. 
And I think I get a little gun shy, get a little scared. Do I pull the trigger here for my tournament life close to making the money with nine high? In game, I actually decided to switch gears mid hand and check. What the hell are you doing, man? I don't actually know. Anyways, onto my opponent. I'm praying to see a free river card, and when he thinks about it for a long time, he ultimately ends up going all in himself for 85,000. I, uh, it's hard to say that even if I have clean diamond outs at this point, because like I said, I could easily be dominated by higher flush draws, and it's all a math problem, basically, and I think I'm just getting the right price. I have nine hypothetical flush draw clean outs. I have three gutter outs as well, so that gives me about 20 to 26% equity, and if my diamond outs are live, I am barely getting the right price to call in the situation. So the issue is, what if I'm dominated in a worst case scenario? What if he has higher diamonds? Then I'm basically screwed. Ultimately, we're close to making the money. I want to preserve my tournament life, and I don't think that this is going to be the spot where I want to commit my entire tournament life with just nine high. I end up just mucking, switch gears on the turn, decided to not go for the trigger and fold. Let me know what you guys think about this hand in the comments below. I'm sure you guys have a lot of opinions, but unfortunately, I'm losing all the big pots so far. My chip stack is down to two hundred thousand and moving on to level 16 i pick up queen jack of hearts under the gun sitting with just under 30 big blinds i raise things up to sixteen thousand and action fold around to the short stack big blind he ends up making the call and defends the big blind let's go to a flop of jack eight five two spades this time i have value with top pair but interestingly enough this big line player takes his time and i'm actually confused whether he acted yet but seems like he didn't because when i ask him he just open shoves Oh my god, it's an all-in of over 100,000 chips. I have top pair. I can't fold in this spot. So let's just hold, hopefully, and hope I have a better hand. I make the call, and he shows nine deuce of spades. Just hold one freaking time, dealer. Need to win this so bad. It'd be basically be like a full double up. Gotta fade the spades on the turn river. Turn comes a heart. The river is red. Let's freaking go. I am so back in this tournament with 171 players left. Needed this one so bad. I've been losing basically every single pot until now. And just like that, my chip stack is at 370,000. Big comeback here. And since Queen Jack suited, it treated me so well. Next hand, we pick up Queen Jack off suit. Let's ride this momentum. I'm on the button, and there's a cutoff. Recreational player raises to 18,000. Trying to play hands against them. I'm in position. It's a decent hand to play, so I make the call, and the blinds fold. Heads up. In position. The flop comes. Jack 8, deuce, rainbow. Let's go. Top pair once again. He decides to bet out 17,000, and I have a pretty easy decision, which is continuing with the call. I have top pair. Let's see a turn. It comes the five of clubs, bringing in a backdoor flush draw, and he decides to check now. Okay, seems like he's got a pretty weak hand. Seems like my hand is good here a lot of the time, and I have a decision to either check or go for value, and against this specific player, plenty of chips to play for. Let's go for value. I bet 55,000. In hindsight, this might be a tad too big, but anyways, it doesn't matter. My opponent doesn't care about my big bet, and he freaking announces all in. What? He covers me, by the way, so it's an all-in of about 300,000 effective, a 6x check jam. What, bro? How does this make any sense? Sitting here, confused, never actually faced a ridiculously big all-in of this size at all in my life. So what the hell does he have? He's, he, has, he has a set, he has a combo draw, he has an overpair trying to get a donk like me to call uh, i'm confused for my tournament life this is really rough i have a queens which blocks some pocket queens that he could have my queen of clubs blocks some backdoor flush draw <laughs> what such a miserable spot to be in another spot that i want to get your opinions on in this hand it's 300,000. it's a lot of life in this tournament and do i want to commit my tournament life once again with just one pair and not a good one at that it seems rough it seems like i might be beat here a lot of the time because i don't expect him to be bluffing but yeah he's laying the hammer down he's got a lot of chips and putting maximum pressure upon me <sighs> and it's a brutal spot i end up just letting it go conserve my 300,000 in chips in my tournament life but this was insane such an insane spot to be in insane to face this check jam but there we go luckily we're on break so i get a breather after this hand all right we're on a quick little dinner break 
A uh, few minutes left till the end of this break. I don't know what to do. A lot of random spots. I'm gonna play my best 30 big blind pokers I can. I have 27 bigs coming after break. 28 people need a bust to make the money. Am I gonna be one of those people on the bubble? I have before, it doesn't feel good. So I'll try my best to not be. Uh, I'm gonna try to play my best 27 big blind poker and go from there. After break, things get a little sweaty. There's 131 players left in level 17. Shortly after that, five players bust, and there's 126 players. Unfortunately, I'm a little card dead, and level 18 comes where I have about 20 big blinds. I raise ace-queen offsuit under the gun. Player to my direct left in plus one next to act three bets me, and we are so close to making the money. Uh, is this a spot where I want to commit my stack? What hands should I be jamming with given this ICM pressure with two or three players left to making the money? Ace queen off suit against an early position three bet. I decided to just pass on it. Decided to fold and survive another hand. And luckily, shortly after folding the ace queen, it gets announced we are hand for hand with 123 players left and no sweat. Didn't really play many hand for hand hands because we are announced to be in the money. Congratulations, you are all in the money. Two people busted at the exact same time, so I guess folding the ace queen paid off. Who knew I wouldn't want to be the bubble boy because it's so important to just stay alive in these spots. And here we are in the money finally, and I have just under 300,000 in chips. In this next spot with ace king off suits, I'm in plus one and an easy open to 25,000. Folds around to the small blind who covers me, and he three bets to 80,000. All right, I have 25 big blinds. Ace king off suit is a premium, and the only option here that makes the most sense is to just jam, not expecting him to fold over, and he makes the call with pocket queens. All right. Haven't really been all in much so far in this tournament of day two. Let's just win a flip one time. The board runs brick, 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 brick. Can't, can't win a damn flip when it counts. So unfortunately, I bust relatively quickly after making the money, and I lose this flip, sadly. And just like that, tournament life comes to an end. The floor deals me a nice white little slip that shows my payout and place, and I'm forced to leave the tournament area and collect my winnings. So this golden lion gave us a little bit of luck. Enough luck to survive. Realistically though, I don't know, today was weird. Um, played for a while, min cashed. It's the World Series of min cashing. It's so loud here, it's crazy. I was up in 100th and first place for 41.95. Can't win a flip. I was all in for my tournament life one time today. I came in with a massive chip stack. This is a grind. You didn't see that many hands, but it was a grind. There's a lot of raise folds. There was a lot of just um, stuff that didn't necessarily go my way, but I just survived. That was it. Didn't play a ton of hands. And when you see Ace King, you go all in and you lose. That's it. Thanks so much for watching this video, tournament video. At least I cashed this time. I think this is my third, fourth cash, this WSOP. And they've all been min caches. Can't even make the full buy-in of the in tournament, but oh well. I, I guess I made money today. The whole point of playing tournaments isn't to min cash though. The, all the money's up top. So you gotta win flips to get there. Thanks so much for watching. Next video is going to be the main event. I'm playing that in a day or two. So be on the lookout for that one. And I don't know what to say, it's a long grind. I'm just gonna go, uh, it's on a party, I guess, or something. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. <sighs> Upwards and onwards to the next tournament. Peace.